Hello and welcome to Sips and Stories. My name is Elizabeth and in today's video I will be doing my middle grade March wrap up. I love middle grade March. It's one of my favorite times of year here on booktube and this year was no exception. I love watching all of your videos. I put so many new books on my TBR this year and again I have to thank the organizers of middle grade March. Books and Jams, The Curly Reader, and Life Between Words for hosting the Middle Grade March this year. The challenges were very unique and a lot of fun. I ended up reading so many fantastic books this year and I cannot wait to share them all with you today. So grab your favorite beverage as we discuss the books that I read for Middle Grade March. The group read this year was a lot of fun and it was a huge surprise for me and that was Pony by R.J. Palacio. Um, R.J. Palacio is the author of Wonder, of course, a very famous middle grade book. Everyone has read that book, everyone loves it. But you know what, now that I read Pony, I think I love it even more than Wonder. So yeah, don't hate me for saying that, but it's even better than Wonder. Which came as a huge surprise for me because when the girls first announced Pony, I was not excited about it. You mean a middle grade book set in the Old West? Ugh, that did not sound like fun to me, but I loved it. It's one of my favorite new middle grade books. It just feels like an instant classic. It was a definite five star read for me. It reminded me a lot of Holes by Lewis Satcher. So if you are a fan of Holes, I think you will really enjoy Pony. Holes is one of my favorite middle grade books. And so this one was a real treat for me. It is about a young boy named Silas. And Silas lives in the Old West with his single father. His mother has died in childbirth. And the unique thing about Silas is that he can see ghosts. So he has this companion that follows him around, Mittenwool, who is a ghost. And one day his father is kidnapped by a band of bank robbers and counterfeiters. And Mittenwool and Silas and his horse Pony set out on this epic adventure to go find his father and track him down. And on the way, of course, he meets more ghosts and bank robbers and thieves and sheriffs and all of these kooky characters and it's very funny but yet sweet and poignant at the same time. The author's writing in this is absolutely incredible. So this one I do recommend for adults that are skeptical about middle grade. Middle grade can be very quality literature and Pony is an excellent example of that. I did listen to the audiobook of Pony, which is a real treat. Just all the voices that he did, those old Western voices and dialects. Such a good book and again, a definite five star read for me. All right, let's get into the challenges. The first challenge that the girls came up with was to read a book with five or more words in the title. And I went through all my TBR looking for a book. I found a couple, but this one kind of fit that challenge and the orphan challenge and that was Tangled in Time, The Portal. So Tangled in Time, The Portal by Katherine Lasky. And I first heard about this book on Darling Desi's channel, who does not love her. And this one was a lot of fun. If you are a fan of historical fiction, especially children's historical fiction, I think you'll enjoy this one. And Katherine Lasky, she's a very famous author. She's best known for kind of the Royal Diaries series, which even I remember as a kid. And this is one of her new series, Tangled in Time, and it's fantastic. It's about a little girl named Rose. At the beginning of the book, her mother dies tragically in a car accident. So she becomes an orphan. So it's perfect for that category as well. She ends up going to live with her grandmother and her grandmother is very senile, very old, Old. but the two kind of bond out in the garden. The grandmother loves to garden. She has this beautiful conservatory and every night Rose goes outside with her to kind of garden and do the seedlings and discuss roses and flowers. And around midnight when her grandmother goes back inside, Rose is instantly transported into Tudor England and she ends up living at the same house as Princess Elizabeth. And it's during the time of King Henry VIII, of course, Queen Mary comes, Prince Edward. So again, if you like the history of England and the Tudors, I think you'll love this book. And so while Rose is over there, she finds this little locket and she kind of figures out that maybe she's not an orphan after all. Maybe her father is still alive he just happens to live in the past. So it's such a fun book. It's part of a series. It does end on a bit of a cliffhanger, but again, if you're a fan of Elizabeth and Mary and just the history of English royalty, you'll really enjoy this book. 
The next book is perfect for the orphan category. And personally, I was just going to cheat and reread Anna Green Gables, but I thought, no, there's plenty of good books out there about orphans. And so I went back on my TBR and I found this one, Everything on a Waffle by Polly Horvath. This has also been on my TBR for quite some time. I first heard about it on Leslie Rickman's channel. Leslie is one of my all-time favorite booktubers. She just has excellent taste. And like me, she loves witty, charming, whimsical books, especially children's books. And so when she recommended this a long time ago, I went out, I bought it, and then it's just been sitting on my shelf ever since. So when this challenge came up, I thought it was the perfect time to read everything on a waffle and i loved it it was witty it was charming very sweet it was almost satirical so i think if you are a fan of pg woodhouse you'll love this book it's almost like pg woodhouse wrote a children's book it's hilarious and now that i read it i want to track down more satire for children because i think that is such a unique category for children's literature this is about a young girl named primrose and she lives in this tiny seaside town called Coal Harbor. And one day her parents get lost at sea. And so she instantly becomes an orphan and the whole town kind of has to band together because they don't know what to do with Primrose. And so she ends up kind of hopping around from one foster family to the next. Eventually her uncle, this very gregarious character, he decides to retire from the Navy and come home and take care of Primrose and adopt her. And they just kind of have a series of adventures together. Hilarious. Each chapter is very episodic. And so it ends with like a little recipe at the end of every chapter. And that's where Polly Horvath's sense of humor comes into play. Also Primrose is very good friends with the town's restaurant owner who puts everything on a waffle. So hence the title, such a funny little book, but yet it's really deep at the same time. So it's funny, but quite emotional at the same time. I love this book. The next category was to read a book set in Asia or where the author was Asian or of Asian heritage or the characters were of Asian descent or heritage. And so for that, of course, I went with a Kelly Yang book, Three Keys, which is the second book in the Front Desk series. I read Front Desk last year for Middle Grade March and I loved it. It was one of my favorites of Middle Grade March in 2021. If you haven't read Front Desk, I highly recommend it. It's hilarious, it's so much fun, and it is loosely based on Kelly Yang's own childhood growing up in a hotel in Anaheim, California, right next to Disneyland. So fun. So the main character, Mia, she immigrates from China to America with her parents. And they end up running this little hotel and at the end of the book, I, I can't spoil it, but in this book they buy the hotel from the evil Mr. Yao and they kind of end up turning it into a hostel for illegal immigrants and refugees and they get into a little bit of trouble with the hotel's investors who kind of want them to not be so political. It also gets into the politics at that time, so I'm not a huge fan of this one in comparison to the first one. Um, it gets into like Prop 187, which was an immigration law that passed in the 90s. It got shot down by the courts, but Kelly Yang gets like a very social justice warrior in this book, which is why I didn't 100% love it. I'm not a huge fan of politics in children's literature, but again, if you're trying to raise, you know, very compassionate and social justice warrior kids, I think you'll love this. Kelly Yang, who does not love her? She started the Kelly Yang Project, which teaches writing to kids both here in America and in China. So she's the real deal. You gotta love her. I read a second book in the Asian category and a lot of people forget that the Middle East and India is also a part of Asia. So I thought it was the perfect opportunity to read a book about Afghanistan. And since the events of last summer, I have been tutoring a young woman who is a refugee from Afghanistan. And I'm just heartbroken by her story about girls that are again being denied access to an education in Afghanistan. And so I was really searching for a book for children that explained the political situation in Afghanistan with US involvement with the Taliban. And I came across this book, Shooting Kabul by N.H. Senzi. This book was excellent. To be honest, it was a lot better than Three Keys. Three Keys was really funny and cute, but this book was excellent, excellent. It's about a young boy named Fadi. It is set right before the events of 9-11, so the early 2000s. 
his father is being recruited by the Taliban and he doesn't want to be. He is a scholar and so he wants to take his family back to America. And so as they are getting on the um, truck to Pakistan and trying to flee from the Taliban, his little sister is left behind accidentally. So it fast forwards to America, Fadi is going to school in San Francisco and then 9-11 happens and he's enduring a lot of bullying at school from the other kids. In the meantime, the family is just heartbroken because the little sister Miriam is still lost in Afghanistan. So they're not sure if she's still there as war starts, Operation Freedom, or if she is in Pakistan. So everyone is searching for her, the US, family, friends, ambassadors, all these people. But Fadi is heartbroken because he thinks it's his fault. While he's going to school, he ends up joining the photography club and they are having this big contest. Whoever wins the photography contest gets free tickets to anywhere around the world to take pictures, like with National Geographic. So Fadi thinks that if he wins the contest, he will get a free ticket to Afghanistan to go back and find his sister which is heartbreaking and poignant and sweet. It also explains the history of the Taliban. I learned a lot of things that even I never knew as an adult from this book. Um, it explains the history of the Afghan refugee experience in America, which is great for kids to learn. And there is a whole glossary of terms at the back, a great author's note. I think this book was loosely based on the author's husband's experience fleeing Afghanistan. And it does have a list of suggested reading for further reading and discussion questions. It's such a good book and it's perfect for the classroom. The next category was a contemporary middle grade novel and I kind of messed up with this category. I read Ramey Nightingale by Kate D. Camillo thinking that it was a contemporary book, but it was not. This book was set in the 1970s, but you know what? Now that I finished it, I do not care. I love this book. It was so good. And who does not like Kate DiCamillo? She is like middle grade royalty now. I think anything she writes becomes an instant bestseller. I wanted to read the Three Ranchero series for quite some time. So the first book is about Rainy Nightingale and then Louisiana and then Beverly is the third book, I believe. And oh my goodness, I first heard about this on Life Between Words channel. I know that Katie loves this book and she is so right. This book is excellent. It tells a story of a little girl named Raimi and Raimi's father at the beginning of the book, he leaves. He runs away from home. He runs away with this dental hygienist and he leaves Raimi and her mother behind. And so Raimi decides to enter the Little Miss Florida tire contest. And she thinks that if she wins this beauty pageant that her father will find out and he will come home. So it's very innocent. You know how kids are about tough situations like this. And Kate D. Camillo's writing is fantastic. Just the way that she internalizes Raimi's thoughts. So well done. While she's competing for the Little Miss Florida tire contest, she ends up meeting these two other little girls, Louisiana and Beverly. And they just jump off the page. The characterization in this book is excellent. I love all of the characters in this book, especially Louisiana and her grandmother. So the second book is all about Louisiana, so I cannot wait to get to that one. But this one, fantastic, so beautiful. The writing was fantastic. And even though it wasn't contemporary, I'm still glad I read it because it was one of my favorites of middle grade March. So as fantastic as Ramey Nightingale was, I still had to read a book for the contemporary category. So I decided to read absolutely truly a pumpkin falls mystery and there is a local bookstore where the booksellers have this book on display all the time it's always at the front of the store in the children's department and so i just decided to buy it on a whim because i love that front cover the snow the children the covered bridge and now that I've read it, oh, I loved it. This is like Gilmore Girls for little kids. So if you're a fan of Stars Hollow and Gilmore Girls, I think you will absolutely fall in love with Pumpkin Falls. It is about a little girl named Truly, and Truly is a little bit older. She's about 12 or 13. She comes from this very big military family. And at the beginning of the book, the father has come back from Afghanistan and he's been injured. He lost his arm in Afghanistan. So this is kind of the American perspective of Afghanistan. And so he ends up retiring from the military. He's suffering from PSD. And he moves the family from Austin, Texas to Pumpkin Falls, New Hampshire, 
where he grew up and he decides to take over the family's bookstore. So the father and his sister, they take over this bookstore. I loved it because all the scenes in the bookstore were so much fun and truly is just having a tough time adjusting to small town life. She misses Austin, she misses her friends. And so one day while she's at the bookstore, she finds a letter in an old copy of Charlotte's Web. And the letter has a series of clues that takes her on this kind of scavenger hunt throughout Pumpkin Falls. While she's trying to solve this mystery, she ends up bonding with all of these kids. It's a lot of fun and again, it's just not a lot happens in this book, but the characters were wonderful. It was very just cozy and charming and so much like a cross between like Army Wives and Gilmore Girls for kids. I love this and I cannot wait to read more in the series. It's such a great book. And the last category this year was to read a book that was older than you. And I just took this to mean to read a children's classic. I love children's classics. It's one of my favorite genres. And after reading all of these contemporary children's books, which were excellent by the way, but they all dealt with some very heavy topics. So it was really nice to go back to something sweet and innocent like The Borrowers by Mary Norton. And that's why I love children's classics because the world's tough enough. And so to have these old fashioned charming stories, I think is really nice. And I think it's very important that we still read these books with children today. The Borrowers is no exception. I really enjoy Mary Norton's writing. She is a very famous British children's author. Last year, I did read one of her other famous books, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, which I enjoyed as well. That one is a lot of fun and a little bit different than the movie Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, so I recommend that one as well. But I never read her most famous book, The Borrowers, and the illustrations in this book are half the charm. This is the new illustrated edition, I think, by Harcourt Press. And the illustrators, Beth and Joe Crush, they're just the funniest, cutest pen and ink illustrations. And so I recommend this book for that reason as well. But if you're new to The Borrowers, it's just a sweet little story about this little family that lives underneath the floorboards of this old mansion. And no one really lives in the mansion except this little old lady and her housekeeper and her gardener. And one day her grandson comes to stay at the mansion and he ends up discovering the borrowers. And so the borrowers are these little people and they go all over the house kind of borrowing things and using them in their own house. And it's just sweet and adorable. And one day Ariadne gets out and she ends up making friends with the little boy which is a big no-no if you're a borrower. You're not supposed to be friends with human beings. It can cause a lot of trouble. I loved it, and Mary Norton actually wrote about four or five books in the Borrower series. So now that I like this first one, I cannot wait to collect them all. This was a definite five-star read for me. So there you have it, everyone. Thank you again for joining me for my middle grade March wrap up. I had such a terrific time this middle grade March. The challenges were unique, but the books were excellent. Again, I cannot recommend Pony enough. The Borrowers and Raimi Nightingale was such a surprise and a delight. Thank you again, everyone, and have a great day. Happy reading.